Is learning assembly language in 2020 a complete waste of time? Hey everybody, welcome back. Students love to complain about their classes and their professors and all the things their professors make them do. But have you ever come across a group of angry students who are shaking their fists and their pitchforks in the air and angrily raging against the machine? There's a pretty good chance that they're complaining about assembly language and the fact that their program or their professor is making them learn it. But Dr. Sorber, nobody programs in assembly language anymore. That's not true, but it feels true. There isn't a lot of assembly language programming professionally done out there. There are a few places where you will use it, but a lot of your computing programs are still going to insist that you learn it at least a little bit. So are they out of their minds? Are they out of touch? Nope. Well, some of them might be, yours might be. But the point is, is there are a few good reasons to learn assembly language in 2020. The main reason is the same reason that we get under the hood in the first place. It's the same reason why programming students learn computer architecture, and it's not because we fiddle around with ALUs and Tomasulo's algorithm all day. It's because understanding how computers work under the hood helps improve our awareness and helps us make better decisions as software developers. It helps us understand why some things are slower than others, and that just translates into better decision making and fewer code rewrites. And of course, even though I don't use assembly language every day of my life, there are times where it definitely comes in handy. But first of all, some of you may be wondering, what is assembly? So simply put, assembly is human-readable machine language. It looks something like this, and it's the intermediate language that your C compiler probably uses when compiling your C code. Basically, it takes your C code, compiles it to assembly instructions, and then the assembler converts the assembly code to binary machine instructions that your computer understands. Quick side note, the first assembly language was created by Kathleen Booth back in 1947, who also interestingly was one of the first people to do research into neural networks way back in the early days when people were first just messing around with computational neural networks. I mean, can you imagine trying to do machine learning at a time when they didn't even really have programming languages, at least not in the sense that you and I usually think of them? It kind of puts things in perspective. So no more complaining about how function pointers are confusing, okay? Now, if you want to see this process up close, what you can do is you can take a C program, here I'm just using Hello World, and compile it with dash S, that's capital S, and the compiler will compile your code to assembly. So now we have a .s file that has our assembly code in it, and this can also come in handy when you're trying to make sense out of some mysterious program behavior, or maybe you're just trying to understand a program that you don't have the source code for, for legal purposes, of course. And of course, any embedded system developers out there know that you're often working with processors and programming tools that are brand new, sometimes not as well tested as the ones that we have on our desktops and our laptops. And we occasionally come across bugs or less than documented compiler quirks. And sometimes the only way to figure out what's going on is to actually look at the machine code that's being generated. Also, another justification for learning machine code is that sometimes you have code that has to be blazing fast. For some reason, every cycle counts, and this little piece of code really, really matters. It has to be super fast. And in that case, although that doesn't happen very often for me these days, but in that case, you may want to write some handcrafted assembly that just handles this really, really fast. But okay, seriously, how much of this do I really need? How much assembly do I need to learn? And of course, the reality is you don't need any of it. Many people have had successful software development careers without knowing any machine language. But how much do I recommend? I recommend that you at least get to the point where you can write some simple programs in assembly. This includes basic arithmetic, IO, system calls, function calls, you can use assembly as a way to better understand how function calls actually work in C. The call stack is never going to look the same again after you've actually managed it in an assembly program. I also recommend that you try to understand the basic types of assembly instructions. So this includes your arithmetic operations like add, subtract, multiply, and divide, as well as your bitwise operations and or not XOR, Let's also throw in comparison operations here, greater than, less than, and equivalence testing. Second, we have our memory access instructions. These are our loads and stores. This is how your program gets information to and from memory. Third, we have our control flow instructions. This is like branches and jumps. And some assembly languages also have built-in instruction support for call stack operations, push and pop, and function calls and system calls. Also through this, you're going to want to understand the different addressing modes, registers, direct addressing, indirect addressing. Now at this point, why am I breaking this down into categories? Why don't I just go into some real specifics for what assembly language looks like? And the reason is, is that 
The assembly language that you learn really depends on the processor you're using. Every processor has a different set of instructions, and so you're going to have a different assembly language for each processor. And that's one of the reasons why I actually don't recommend that you spend too much time worrying about becoming an expert software developer in assembly, unless of course you want or have one of those jobs where you need assembly every day. At that, in that case, become an expert in your flavor of assembly language. But for most of you out there, the point is not to master a particular assembly language. The point is to understand how assembly languages work and how they convert your C code or whatever code you write in a higher level language into low level machine code, because that's what's going to make you a better programmer. So if you have a computer organization class or a computer architecture class that has an assembly component to it, great. Stick with that, that's probably all you need. Just make sure you learn what you can from it because it's going to help you in the future. If you don't have a class to help you, of course you can find a book. The other thing is you can use your C compiler to try to learn it. Just write really simple C programs, convert them to assembly, and actually look at how different things in C translate into assembly instructions. Then of course you can look up the documentation for your processor's assembly language and make sure that these translations all make sense to you. One thing to keep in mind while you're doing this is make sure that you turn off optimizations because leaving optimizations on could drive you absolutely crazy because the optimizer is going to change the code to make it faster in ways that may not seem naturally the same to you. So let me know in the comments below if there's more interest out there for assembly related content. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my next video on how you can become a better programmer and have a stronger foundation by getting under the hood. And until next time, I'll see you later.